Chapter Six of Dave Dashaway, The Young Aviator, by Roy Rockwood. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Six. Cadmus. Look out! Shouted Dave suddenly. In his eagerness to recover his horse, the man who had just come up to the scene of the capture ran directly up to the animal to promptly retreat in some dismay. Without trying to break away from Dave, the horse began to move rapidly in a half circle, using tail, rear hooves, and body as a menace against the approach of its master. Dave gave the animal another cookie, which quieted it down. However, the horse kept a constant eye on the man, who did not venture to approach any nearer. "'Well, well, well,' laughed the man in a comical way. "'This is a new stunt for Cadmus. "'Why, I thought we were friends, old fellow,' he added, addressing the horse. "'Did he run away from you?' inquired Dave. "'The first chance he got, and the only one so far.' "'How is that?' asked Dave curiously. "'He was raised as a pet. "'Anybody can see that. "'Never heard of Cadmus?' "'Well, not until you called him that,' replied Dave. "'Well, Cadmus is a famous racer. He looks it. "'Oh, he's made his name. Isn't that so, Beauty? "'Take care,' again warned Dave. "'Cadmus is still a little nervous. "'In fact, the horse had resented any nearer approach of its master. "'Dave almost fancied that the intelligent animal "'pressed up close to himself as if asking protection.' "'Thinks he's going to get a whip for breaking the rule,' said the man. "'I'll discipline on feed, but I never strike one of my horses. "'I say, youngster, you've done me an immense favor. "'Will you carry it a little further?' "'I'll try,' replied Dave willingly. "'If he was going my way,' and the speaker nudged his shoulder down the road in the direction from which he had just come. "'Oh, anyway suits me,' responded Dave quickly. "'Then I wish you would lead the horse till we get to the car. "'Cadmus seems to have taken a fancy to you.' "'He belongs in a car?' asked Dave, a little vaguely. "'Why, yes,' replied the man with a stare at Dave, "'as if he was supposed to know that. "'We're taking Cadmus to Brompton. "'They switched us in the yards, and someone left the car door open, "'and Cadmus made his break.' "'Oh, I understand now,' said Dave quickly. And then an eager thought came into his mind as he wondered if this lucky incident might lead to his finding a way out of Brookville unnoticed. The last cookie in Dave's hand kept Cadmus quiet and friendly until they reached the railroad yards. The man piloted the way among the network of tracks and finally along a string of freight cars standing behind a planked roadway. Here we are, he reported. Dave noticed that the man had halted beside a light-colored car bearing the words, Palace Horse Car. A small colored boy dressed in a horse jockey's jacket and a big husky fellow who looked like the hostler were tilting a slanting platform up to the big door at one end of the car. It took some persuasion to get Cadmus to go up to this cleated platform, but it was finally accomplished. Dave looked around the car with some admiration. "'It deserves its name, Palace, doesn't it?' he asked the owner of the horse, who seemed greatly relieved to find the animal housed once more safe and sound. "'You ought to see the accommodation we have in a trip across the continent,' returned the horseman. "'This is nothing to it.' "'This is pretty fine to my way of thinking,' declared Dave." Fully one half of the car was given up to Cadmus. The box stall at one end was padded and cushioned to guard him against jarring. The feed box was of porcelain, and the light blanket they put on Cadmus was as fine as a silk bed quilt. "'Come in, youngster,' invited the horseman, when he had seen that Cadmus was attended to properly. He led Dave into a partitioned-off apartment, comfortable as a boudoir in the Pullman sleeper. There was a couch, a table, and plush-covered easy chairs. Into one of these chairs Dave sank. 
"'I calculated I'd have some trouble getting that horse if you hadn't come along,' asserted the man. "'Oh, when Cadmus got through playing, he would have been docile enough,' suggested Dave. "'And made me miss my railroad connections in a big race tomorrow,' added the horseman. "'See here,' and he glanced into a pocket-book he had taken out, and then drew a long, slim book and fountain pen from another pocket. "'What's your name?' Why, hesitated Dave, what do you want to know for? I want to give you a check. What for? To fix you out for your trouble. I wouldn't know where to cash it, declared Dave. Besides, if you want to fix me out, as you call it, there's another way that would please me better. Well, just name it, youngster. This car goes to Brompton, you told me, I think. Yes, we start in about an hour. Well, sir observed dave if you give me a free ride as far as that i will consider that you have paid me a hundred times over for the little i have done for you little you have done for me cried the horseman i suppose you don't consider that cadmus is just about worth his weight in gold to me now see here and the man took the pocketbook out again and drew forth two bills there's all the currency i've got with me two fives you'll take them no sir said dave you'll take them i said repeated the man in a forceful way and you'll give me your name and address and promise that if ever you need a friend you'll send word to amos baker here's my card money and card were thrust on dave in spite of himself my name is dave dashaway he said but i have no address and i don't know how soon i may have oh is that so observed the horseman eyeing his companion curiously yes sir the truth is i'm leaving home in a hurry but that cannot interest you yes it will echoed the horseman tell me about it lad maybe i can give you some advice that will help you out dave told his story and his auditor listened to it with great attention i like your pluck and your plan to get to fairfield is all right said the horseman We'll be at Brompton in three hours. You've now got money enough to carry you to Fairfield and a good deal farther. Your going to Brompton is carrying you directly out of your route. You can ride as far as that, though. Get off there and take the first train for Fairfield. See? I shall never forget all your kindness, Mr. Baker, said Dave gratefully. Just as the locomotive hitched on to the train of which the stock car was a part, Mr. Baker called in the colored boy. He gave him some orders, and in a few minutes quite a repast was spread out on the table from several hampers in the car. The train reached Brompton after midnight. Mr. Baker shook hands heartily with Dave. "'I reckon nobody will be hanging about looking for you at this time of night,' he observed. "'Good luck to you, youngster.' If you have any further trouble with that pesky guardian of yours, drop me a line, and I'll appear on the scene. I'll write occasionally, anyhow. I'll be glad to hear how you're getting along. If some mean people don't interfere, it will be in a good way. For you're the right kind of boy to make a success, Dave Dashaway, and Amos Baker says it. The freight train had stopped at a crossing, and as it moved on, Dave had to walk down the tracks nearly one-half a mile to reach the railroad depot. Dave trudged on, hopefully, to meet his first experience in a big city. End of chapter 6